data management system. And we, uh, without further ado, I'd want to, to invite the team to make their presentation. Just to remind you, the session is what for, is, will be learning for one hour. Around 40 or 30 to 40 minutes will be the presentation. And after which we are going to have our, the normal discussion, the quest, question and answer sessions. Please feel free to write your questions in the chat box, and then we shall pick them and, and, and answer them toward the end of the presentation. Thank you and welcome, team. Mr. Bede, I hand the presentation, the, the session over to you to continue from there. Welcome. Hope you can see my screen. Thank you all for taking the time uh, to attend this session. Uh, during this session, we'll be talking about uh, data utilizations, dashboards, and uh, data sources, and Ethiopian country experience on health data management. Uh, before going deep uh, into the presentation, I'd like first to talk about uh, why data matters and like why test data matters uh, for uh, for any laboratory uh, serving uh, for any purpose uh, the the main output uh, is information uh, and when it, we talk about data management uh, it comprises of uh, all the disciplines related to managing data which uh, which like uh, starts from collecting data storing protecting uh, and analyzing uh, the data for an improved and better decision making. Um, and also for, uh, the main purpose in, is, is in the laboratory is facilitating access to testing. Uh, the, the final output and what really does matter is like the, the test data and how we, we utilize and how we avail that information. Uh, we use the test data for a, a fast result delivery uh, to facilities to patients uh, for a better and immediate clinical management of the patient, contact tracing, and uh, patient status, uh, and also an uh, outcome and monitoring of uh, hotspots uh, uh, and guiding the national program for decision making. Uh, we, we also use testing data for, for diagnostic commodity monitoring. Uh, to inform uh, a future procurement and uh, mitigation risk of uh, stockouts. Uh, and finally, like the, the visibility of this uh, test data uh, for, for optimizing the health and the laboratory activity and the decision making process. Uh, without uh, a proper uh, data management, we we'll run into uh, service and maintenance problem, uh, uh, running into considerable amount of laboratory analyzer sitting down, uh, reduced quality testing uh, and systems, uh, facing the problem of forecasting and uh, supply chain process. Uh, to overcome this, uh, so we need like to really invest uh, our resources, uh, time, and collaborate uh, for a sustainable and robust data management uh, policy and practices. Um, for a better uh, decision making process, uh, one Peter, of hello? Sorry, to inter sorry to interrupt you for a minute. Uh, we are seeing the presentation. Um, would you mind putting it pre in a presentation mode? We are seeing the two screens at the same time. We are seeing the next slide. So, the, whatever is visible on the screen is, uh, is greatly uh, reduced. Perfect. That's, that's okay now. Okay, thank you so much. Great. Uh, so the main technological tool that helps us uh, uh, for a better decision-making uh, process uh, are dashboards. And when we talk about dashboards, it's a, a data visualization uh, process of converting a raw information into an easily understandable uh, information using uh, pictures. Uh, uh, to enable us for a fast and effective decision making. Uh, 
decision makers, uh, program managers, uh, would like to see uh, the, the, the main analysis and the, the, uh, the pictorial information of uh, what, what has been collected, what's been uh, transformed and processed. Uh, but to really get into that process, like it takes a huge amount of resources, uh, but, but putting, in, putting into like uh, server setups uh, and the infrastructure, uh, getting the raw data information, extracting that, that information and uh, transforming it into a, a meaningful process, uh, data mod modeling and manipulation uh, to really get key indicators and meaningful information which really helps decision makers to quickly and efficiently make uh, a decision. Uh, so dashboards, they allow us uh, uh, to see several different perspectives of the data easily and quickly, um, quickly analyze a vast amount of information. Uh, it offers us uh, an ability uh, to note an exception within the data. Uh, and also it allows us uh, to, to see the visual patterns that are happening with, with the data, exploring those, those trends and uh, translating the data patterns into insights, making it uh, highly uh, efficient for decision-making tool. The common uh, trend uh, of uh, looking into a dashboard uh, is based on the data sources and aggregate information into a pictorial information. Uh, but we are now also seeing um, small initiatives being put into also predictive analysis backed with artificial intelligence and not only aggregating and uh, visualizing vast amount of information, but uh, based on that data and trend, uh, picking the hotspots uh, uh, to also like predict uh, what will happen in the future, uh, what on what points that we should uh, focus and uh, put our resources, uh, uh, so with predictive analysis and uh, backing with an artificial intelligence on a dashboard is also one of like the, the new uh, the new upcoming uh, technology and trend uh, being put into the dashboards. Uh, so all, we get all these benefits on a dashboard uh, uh, from different data sources, from different raw data sources. And within a laboratory, uh, when we talk about uh, data sources for dashboards, uh, what stands out most is laboratory information, uh, data management system, uh, diagnostic connectivity solutions, most of the analyzers that are being introduced now, the conventional ones, including point of care devices or near point of care devices, they have the capability to uh, generate and emit data, uh, electronic data, and also ML solution, different kinds of mobile health solution, uh, which we use we are at, the, at different levels of facilities and laboratories uh, to digitize the information, not only digitize and the information uh, for, a, for a data source for uh, national dashboards or the dashboards in general, but also optimize the workflow process within the laboratory. Uh, to, to make their daily routine works uh, more efficient and easier uh, for them to focus on the testing process part. So uh, coming into one of the major data sources, uh, laboratory information uh, management system, uh, it, it comprises of uh, different processes starting from uh, planning uh, to reporting, uh, uh, during the planning period, organizing the different roles and sampling points and specifying what the workflow looks like. Uh, and also during uh, sample processing, uh, starting from sample reception, storing uh, to uh, barcode labeling and routing the samples, uh, work allocation uh, to help uh, manage the, the, the different tasks within uh, laboratories uh, and instruments, uh, scheduling uh, what needs to be done at a given time uh, by different personnel, and capturing the results uh, through uh, from the instrument uh, and also from uh, lab uh, personnel, 
uh, and also the inventory usage uh, of uh, the, the process within the process while generating the results and approval processes, uh, checking, reviewing, uh, and approving the results, or if there is a need like to uh, retest uh, the process or recurring incidents. And finally, uh, different types of reports, query reports in a different types of uh, reporting formats, uh, PDF or Excel, uh, any, any word processing formats, uh, and also availing the data uh, for integration uh, via web services. So, so this is like the main uh, uh, processes within a given uh, laboratory information management system, uh, which is one of uh, the main uh, data source uh, for, a, a, for a dashboard uh, for, uh, for, to, 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 to see uh, a pictorial analytical information of what's happening uh, throughout the different laboratories that, that we have in, in country. Uh, there are different types of uh, laboratory information management systems, um, starting from the open source one uh, to a proprietary uh, systems or um, uh, laboratory information management systems developed by partners. Uh, uh, so we have a good amount of resources, sample amount of resources that uh, that we can take and implement uh, if we need to have a laboratory information management system. Uh, there is no need like to start from scratch. Uh, there are uh, different uh, learnings uh, that, that have been invested into these open source and uh, custom systems developed by uh, partners. Um, and the other part of data source for dashboards is uh, diagnostic uh, device uh, uh, data that automatically get emitted uh, from from laboratory analyzers. Uh, we, us we usually uh, call them like connectivity solutions uh, for uh, diagnostic devices. Uh, so what we mean by connectivity is um, the giving the, 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 um, the laboratory analyzer an ability to transmit data to another device or system uh, for a remote monitoring and getting the data. So we have uh, uh, our laboratory ana analyzers uh, and we need a tool to transfer that data uh, from these analyzers uh, via different types of communication channels, Wi-Fi, cable-based connection, or mobile-based connection. And we need a network, a mobile network uh, available pub publicly uh, to transfer that data uh, uh, to uh, any uh, central system uh, which, which may be hosted within Ministry of Health or a cloud hosting servers. Uh, once we get the data into these servers, we can uh, build on top of that uh, front-end application which aggregates and analyzes the data which we call a dashboard, a web-based, which can be accessed uh, via desktop web or mobile-based uh, yeah. application. Uh, all this data coming in in a real-time process uh, will help us uh, to, to monitor uh, the uptime and the performance of these analyzers, which also gives us their consumption data, uh, they get their quality information, and this information will help us to, to forecast and also be on top of service and the maintenance uh, process of the, the analyzers uh, and uh, having the, the forecasting data, the consumption data for forecasting will help us to plan accurately our procurement and supply chain process. Uh, for connectivity, the diagnostic device connectivity solution, regardless of the device type, POC, near POC or conventional device, we have uh, different types of solutions available. We usually group these solutions into three integrated uh, solutions which provide data in an aggregate form and uh, uh, transmit that data or in data aggregation tools, uh, which uh, stores uh, the uh, aggregated data, and we can pick that data for any type of uh, dashboard and data um, uh, data processing uh, systems that we have, and data transmission uh, uh, systems or solutions 
which transmit whatever the, the device is emitting uh, to, a, to a system that, that we need to interpret this data with. So we get the raw data and we can manipulate that raw data uh, into any uh, any aggregation, any uh, visualizations system that, that we have. And uh, a common deployment option for both uh, uh, connectivity solutions and uh, um, con uh, laboratory information management system is to host uh, it within Ministry of Health. Uh, there are different connectivity solutions uh, which come with the cloud hosting options, including LIMS uh, laboratory information management system solutions. But uh, with majority of the country's data policy insists on storing the data within country, which needs a, 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 a to invest really like on uh, on infrastructure and resource uh, for a better and the quality uptime of uh, the, the servers, the infrastructure uh, for better transmission of uh, data from these different data sources, uh, connectivity solutions or laboratory information management information system. Uh, most, all of the data that we get uh, from uh, connectivity solutions or laboratory information uh, systems we, we really need to, to focus on uh, on how we can use it uh, for uh, commodity planning, uh, the quality of testing and availability of test. Um, so if we if we invest and uh, implement uh, such systems, we'll get real time data uh, for uh, which helps us to get the consumption uh, data information on the uptime of uh, the, the devices that we have uh, at different locations, helps us in the forecasting process, uh, our procurement and uh, supply chain process, um, which ultimately will, will give us to assure availability of quality diagnostic tests, uh, monitoring uh, of patients, longevity of uh, the, the therapy that we give uh, for our patients, uh, which really the, the key goal uh, of the health sector uh, to, to invest uh, on, on such systems, uh, uh, making sure we, have, uh, we are providing a quality diagnostic test, uh, ultimately saving lives. Uh, I'll now stop sharing and give the floor to my colleague, uh, Carla Christos, uh, who will be presenting uh, on how to implement such systems uh, in, uh, in Ethiopian experience. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Galata. So Galata has given us a background information into why do we really need dashboards. So it gives me an opportunity to quickly jump over into the country experience. So I'll be sharing you the country experience and implementing the early infant diagnosis and viral data systems in Ethiopia. So uh, going forward into the details which I have prepared into my presentations, Excuse me, give me one minute. So my screen sharing is not moving forward. All right. So as, when I come to the background information, so following the viral scale of planning country, like four or five years back, 
So CHAI in collaboration with the CHAI developed an integrated HIV viral load and lymphoma diagnostic database systems based on the nationally approved test request and result reporting forms. So at that time, it was very critical to answer some of the basic questions that every system has to answer. And the European Public Health Institute, in collaboration with CHAI and even including other partners, CDC, so there was an intention to develop such a kind of a database system. So we developed the database system in collaboration with EPP and Public Health Institute. Currently, the database system is being installed at 21 testing centers. So that those centers are using the system for systematic and easy data capture, storage transfer, and report generation options. So that data from all these 21 testing labs is coming to a central system through a, an initiative or technical step that we use known as synchronization. So that based on the synchronized data, the system enables regional health bureaus, partner agencies, and Ministry of Health to get first-hand information on HIV, EID, and viral data from a single point of access. Not only building on the synchronization, the system included different set of reports, including the CDC data. So when we uh, come to the development of the database system, so there was a very basic question that every database system has to answer. So in our context, the intention from the ministry or the Ethiopian Public Health Institute was the system has to answer some of the basic questions, for example, like the, considering the UNA's target, which is the triple 90 target. So the Ministry of Health or Ethiopian Public Aid Institute would like to consider or would like to work on a viral of suppression so that which patients are not virally suppressed, for example, the, the, the system has to answer because treatment initiation, follow-up, adherence, care and treatment has to consider whether the clients are virally suppressed or not. So that in order to make an informed decision making, the system has to answer which patients are not virally suppressed. On another case, so that one of the critical issues that we've been working was on sample rejection. So what was the sample rejection rate in country? Samples are collected and being transported from different facilities into the testing lab. So the, the, the sample could be rejected for different technical reasons. So what is the rate of rejection? Not only what is the rate of rejection, so what are the reasons this, this, the sample could be rejected? It could be related with the transport, it could be related with sample collection and so on, so that the national team could act on and work, so that why most samples are rejected and so on. But well, as a note, uh, for the quantification and forecasting into the different types of drugs which are imported in country, so the national team wants to know which of the patients are into the first line treatment, second line and third line treatment as well. And on another note, again, the system has to answer what is the national viral suppression rate? Because up, uh, from the, the triple 90 target, by 2020, countries are supposed to achieve 90% of viral suppression rate in order to effectively track the progress into the viral suppression. What is the, what the, the, the viral suppression rate? The system has to answer. And also different kinds of reports are being generated. Most of them are usable for decision making, uh, for programmatic follow-up and related, and how do we really generate the report? The other is uh, for treatment initiation, uh, early delivery of result is very critical. So in terms of that, how do we really uh, deliver test result electronically so that the system has to answer? So all these things were supposed to be addressed by the system when we specifically work into the HIV, AID, viral load data systems and the, system, the developed system has to answer all this. So, Based on all these criteria that we collected from the program people, the developed system has to answer all the questions. So what are the, when we try to see what are the basic features of the system, the first is data capturing. So, so data capturing is taking place at the viral load and early infant diagnosis testing labs. Data capturing is considering of copying of paper request forms into the electronic version. For both HIV early infant diagnosis and viral load test record forms are captured. In terms of worksheet preparation, when samples are arriving to the testing lab, before actual testing is going on, the lab has to generate a work list to make sure that uh, which of the items or which of the samples are in process and not yet tested. So the system will generate work list. Again, result registration and approval. When the results are ready by the system, data clerk has to fill in the result and the quality officers available in the lab has to approve. So the system has the result registration and approval. Patient data tracking was also critically essential because for the viral testing, 
every year or at least the patient will be tested every year so in every testing what was the viral load result and what was even including the EID so tracking was essential to make sure that the trend into the viral suppression how it's going on to the individual region the other is electronic result delivery the system has an extension it is SMS result delivery option so the system can deliver results electronically to the requesting of the facility so this we will deliver the result to the SMS printers so another one is customized report. Reports are essential for programmatic decision making, for quantifications and related issues. So customized reports, again, are generated by the system. Raw data for analysis is also generated from the system. So different kinds of reports are requested for the research purpose. So raw data for analysis is exported in the form of an Excel. Automatic dashboarding is also generated in order to make a program follow up quickly by viewings and visualizations automatic dashboards are also part of the system. So any other system has input, process, and output. The TP and HIV early infant diagnosis in the viral load system has an input. The inputs are basic inputs that we really expect to have in, in any kind of uh, laboratory information systems like regional health facility. The region or the health facility information is recorded. Next to that, the client information is recorded. All these information are copied from the test request form. Then sample related information are also copied from the test request form and laboratory related information is also registered plus results are supposed to be part of the input. So what happens internally in the system is when the, the sample arrives, sample registration takes place. Next to the sample registration, preparation of work is for the lab to make a follow up which of the specimens are in the lab and not yet tested. Then registration of result and approval. So the output from the system is one is electronic result, which is uh, very important for treatment initiation and follow-up. Another one is raw data for analysis for a program people to make follow-up. The other one is summary of reports. Reports are very essential again, and also digital archive. So these are some of the input process and output that we are expected from the system. So when we implement the system, actually, uh, it was quickly developed the system. So we have to follow into different test-based implementation that we have considered. The first was application pilot. We have to develop the application in a pilot, quickly develop the application based on uh, the then available test request form, and we piloted the system in three or, or uh, four different types of testing labs. And after completing the pilot phase, we evaluated the pilot outcomes. We made some sort of modification. We tried to go for the first phase scale-up, again, in the, in the scale-up phase. We considered, again, comments and suggestions suggested by renal health bureaus and testing lab. We incorporated those comments and we go for the second phase scale -up. When we go to the second phase scale -up, we incorporated the electronic research delivery system to be part of the system. And we go for the third phase scale -up. The third phase scale -up actually considers the request form, test request form was modified at that stage. Then we have to modify the system to fit into the newly modified request form. Plus, initially at the start -up, the system has a little less validation to enable uh, as much possible data registration in the system. So in the third phase scale up, in order to improve the data quality, we enforce different kinds of inbuilt quality checks and logic checks in the system. Due to this implementation, there are essential steps that we have been following. Training is very critical. So both in the pilot phase and in the scale up phase, we have to consider training of data clerks and lab technologies from the health facility. Training is either the basic training or refresher training because different things are uh, occurring in the system periodically. So training we have to consider and also supervision. So we have to monitor and we have to be available physically to make sure that all training procedures are well captured and we have to do supervision and technical support. The software systems are relying on availability of sustainable technical support. So we have to provide Technical support. So, technical support could be troubleshooting, reinstalling, and build all the requests of technical support. And system upgrade was also uh, part of the implementation phases that we've been following. So, so this way, we implemented the HIV early for diagnosis and the viral data capturing system in all the 21 testing labs available in country. So, during the implementation phase, now I'm going to show you or I'm going to describe the project extension known as data synchronization. So what do we mean by data synchronization is all the viral load data systems are installed at each testing lab on locally configured computer. Initially, we were evaluating different alternatives in the implementation, like 
installing the system centrally and allowing sites to work with remote logging. So that was actually difficult in our case because if internet is disconnected in testing labs, so testing labs would not be able to record real-time information. So we decided to come to a point that we have to work on, on, on isolated installation. Each of the testing labs have their own copy of the database, which is available to web-based application actually on the inside. So this system works in the offline mode. In order to implement testing labs, the system works in the offline mode. The internet is not required. But there was a time that data from all these 21 labs would be collected centrally to a single point. The Ministry of Health has given us an assignment that data should be collected from all these 21 testing labs into a single point. So we developed the project extension known as synchronization. What synchronization does is it puts data automatically from testing labs into a central server available at the Ministry whenever internet connections are available. So this is called the synchronization data from each of the testing labs is synchronized to a single point so that all testing, all testing labs are uh, automatically sending data to a single, a single point, which was really critically significant to get data as, uh, from a single point. Now, after uh, developing of the synchronization stats, again, we keep on building synchronization step by step regionally because we have to have, uh, you know, every time what are the issues, technical procedures, availability of internet, some sort of network configurations required to make synchronization to work. So we implemented synchronization in 20 of the labs. Out of the 21, 20 of the labs are now synchronized. Recently, a new lab has joined into the testing, which they are facilitating their connection. And after completing of their internet connection, we'll be synchronizing that lab again so that all of the labs will be automatically sending data to a central system. They are not limited whether there is internet connection is available or not because they are working in the offline mode. The third extension of this HIV early infant diagnosis and the viral load data system was regional access dashboard. Now, data from all the 20 testing labs is synchronized to a single point. So there has to be a way to make this data usable or accessible or visualizing to the user. So regional access dashboard is a, a dashboard which is built on synchronized data. It enables students to monitor the testing because testing labs are dispersed all over the country and within regions, different testing laboratories are available. So regional health bureaus are supposed to monitor testing going on. So from this regional access dashboard or from regional or the national dashboard available for early infant diagnosis and viral load, regions are monitoring testing progress within their own regions. Not only in that way, trans-regional referral network is available from one of the regions health facility might refer specimen to another region. So wherever the specimen is tested, the, the originated region will get access to the data. So which is called that the regional access dashboard. So this dashboard gives personal information for Ministry of Health agencies and partners to be able to get data from a single point. So that this regional access dashboard has two uh, sections. One of them is the graphical visualization. What does it really visualize is, is uh, viral load and AID testing, regional testing. So testing per region plus viral load test per gender, viral load test per age group. These are key indicators that the national team is using for disaggregation of report. And also viral suppression by regimen. On each of the regimens, clients are having more viral suppression plus viral load test reason or justification for test. Why viral for the viral load tests are recommended for testing? Another visualization could be a viral suppression. And not only the viral suppression, previously I mentioned that we have sample rejection as well. Why most of the samples are rejected and which uh, of the criteria is basically the, in the sample rejection. So depending on the rejection, the national team can plan up either a supervision or discussing with the courier team and so on. And also monthly testing friends are part of this. So different kinds of, this is actually part of the dashboard. Not only uh, graphical visualization, reports are supposed to be generated, that is exported static report. So these static reports are regional testing summary. What is the total number of viral loads tested in each region? Plus, not only regional summary, summary lab, lab tested reports are available. And also the system actually generates data report and raw data for analysis. So this regional access dashboard has different options for customizing of the reports. Again, it is possible to in the Excel format. Last, additional special data tracking is also available. Individual data is available. 
and also give us the chance to monitor the turnaround time. So that what is the turnaround time of each of the labs, so the national team, especially the Ethiopian Public Institute, could easily monitor what is significantly contributing to the long turnaround time. This is the regional access dashboard. So again, there is another extension of this HIV and lymphoma diagnosis and the viral load data system, which is called that electronic test order and result reporting system, which is called that the ATORS. So ATORS is a system that enables ordering of viral load tests and delivery of results electronically by developing data exchange or interoperability between testing lab system and health facility system. Let me try to, give, to take you to the viral load uh, referral process first, so that when there is a need for health facilities to send viral load samples for testing to testing lab, the RT cleaning first fills out test request form and will send the client on the same facility for sample collection. Then the facility now will collect sample and will send the sample together with the request form to, through the courier service. With the courier service has to pick the specimen from the health facility and has to deliver their sample and request form to the testing lab. Upon reception of the testing lab, the testing lab has to check the quality of the specimen, whether it is acceptable for testing or not. If it's acceptable for testing, then the data clerks at the reception has to return this test request form and will give it to the lab for processing. Whenever result is ready, result is returned back through the courier service to the health facility again. So previously I mentioned that ATORS is a system built by inter-exchange of data between the, the uh, health facility and testing lab. At the health facility, there is enhanced AMR reality system, which is managed by ICAP. At the testing lab, there is the viral load in AD data system. So by exchanging data between these two systems, the system called the ATORS is built upon. So during the implementation of the viral load, before implementation or before developing of the ATORS system, we really faced some challenge. What was the driving force for building interoperability? One of them was the poor data quality. Because uh, the paper request form together with the specimen is transported all the way from the health facility to the, to the testing lab. Testing lab data clerks are copying data from the paper request form into the electronic version. If there are some missing fields and inconsistent data, they don't have a chance to call to the health facility and correct it because they are very far away. So data quality was compromised. On another note, once testing is completed, the testing lab has to deliver results back to the facility through the courier service. So which was, again, uh, uh, contributing to delayed clinical intervention, especially on high viral load uh, tracking and uh, intervention. So the poor data quality and long turnaround time were driving force into the developing of interoperability solution. In order to solve this solution, so we were exploring different alternatives. One of the alternatives was, what if, if we use tablet or other handheld devices at the health facility level to register uh, requests electronically, but introducing tablets and other devices could have its own different challenge. That was not a solution. Again, the previously mentioned remote login, that also has an issue to the internet connectivity problem. So when we try to explore all the options, the only and the best available option is what a technology solution known as interoperability. If we build interoperability between data systems that are available at the health facility and data systems that are available at the testing lab, so that we will be able to manage this the interoperability solution. So this is the smart care enhanced ART module, which is managed by ICAP, is available at the health facility, and the viral load in the ID data system is available at the testing lab. If we manage data exchange between these two systems, the previous problem, which is data quality and poor uh, long, prolonged turnaround time could be significantly reduced. So when we address in the proposed solution, so the, the flow will be a little bit different. Now, ART clinic fills out request form and will give the request form to data clerk. Data clerk has to recap this uh, request form electronically into smart care ART and will send it the electronically to the testing lab. The testing lab receives the electronic request and they have to wait until the paper format is available. With the paper format together with the specimen is available. Once the paper format together with the specimen is available, the receiving lab reception has to, to make sure that whether the specimen is acceptable for testing or not. 
If it's not acceptable, they will immediately notify through the interoperability service that the specimen is rejected so that the health facilities will, will collect the sample and send again. Otherwise, they recap information so that once testing is completed, data clerks spill out the result and the quality officer has to do approval. Upon approval, the electronic result is delivered automatically to the health facility through the interoperability layer, layer that we build on. So to come up to this, we were exploring different options. One of them is we have to build a simple interoperability service that manages the exchange of data. So we use the Web API technology because we have a prior experience in using the technology. Plus, Web API meets technical requirements, which, which is recommended for the interoperability and also limited investment. So the, the learning curve and the experience that we have it was you know, helping us to come up with the interoperability service. So we build data exchange through the Web API and interoperability service. Later, we upgraded using the OpenHIM to have a better uh, scheduling, routing, and security features. That is, again, contributing to the OpenHI framework. So to come up with this, we were using a strong collaboration format. This work is a joint work of Chai, EPHI, ICAP, and CDC, strong collaboration of these partners. We have a regular technical working group. We, 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 we meet. We, we are following up on assignments and working together as one team. It was actually a very good showcase for different partners' collaboration. When we try to come up with a high level architecture, I'm not going deep into the high level architecture, but simply giving some pictures. So, the, how does it happen is the health facility fills out electronic request and we'll send it. So the interoperative service layer, which is built on OpenHIM and custom uh, c -sharp script that we develop, will analyze the request and will send it to respective lab. So again, the lab will get the request. The lab will get the request. That lab, again, will accept the request or will defer it to another lab. So the labs are accepting the request, will process. Once results are ready, the lab will approve. Upon approval, results are automatically going to the interoperative service. The interoperative service there will decide to which facility the result has to go. The result will immediately go to that facility and will be part of the patient medical detail. This is how uh, technically what the ETHERS basically looks like. When we see the implementation of ETHERS, we have piloted the ETHERS in 12 health facilities and three testing labs. We now are into the scale up phase. Out of the scale up plans that we have, 56% of the health facilities are already covered for the scale up phase. So nine testing labs will take part in the overall scale up. Out of the nine testing labs, seven of the testing labs are already in the implementation and scale up phase. We have a follow up on the interoperability service to make sure that which requests are captured, which, request, which results are returned, not only returning of results, once results are arrived and become part of the patient return, which of the results are already captured and considered by which health facility. We have a follow up mechanism where we have built a dashboard in between to help us in the follow up case. The final system which we have on the HIV and lymphoma diagnosis part is a GX alert system. Previously, uh, Galeta has mentioned it well. So we have a connectivity system built on the Linux platform. So initially, it was used for MTB relief. Now the system is already usable for HIV quad. So early infant diagnosis test, point of care HIV testing data is significantly captured on the GX alert dashboard. So that GX alert dashboard gives us different features like result by device, like with how many positive, how many negative, and other essential recommendations like high error rate and high error rate plus which device have been offline for a long period of time, which are critical for decision making. For our case, I would like to show you one single dashboard, for example, lab dashboard, a specific testing laboratory, like how many tests per day that the laboratory is doing. It also gives us out of the four modules of the GeneX part, which of the modules are giving out more errors so that it helps us to exclude in order to save the cartridge and also which of the errors are most common and utilization rate and so on. Depending on this health facility, depending on this, the central team will get an access or the central team will get uh, first some information to go to the supervision and the technical support as well. So this uh, GXR system, which was initially used for MTB relief, now is using for HIV quant. So following the 40 AD scale up, significant number of AD tests are being done on the expert machine. So that we have the ID in two dashboards. One of them is the JXR, the other one is the national dashboard. But the ministry was recommending to have data into a single point. 
when we are thinking of integrating POC ID and conventional ID data, data into a single point, the POC ID data has a single limitation because in the gene express system, only uh, few indicators have to be captured. The safety software system available on the machine was allowing us to capture all the limited information, which are patient ID, sample ID, and uh, other assay related information. Other clinical indicators which were available on the test request form could not be captured. For that, we come up to uh, an initiative known as custom field data capturing, where we, we will be able to capture complete indicator or complete request form data available into the connectivity solution. So we built up the custom field data capturing, and now not only uh, patient ID and supply ID and some assay information, complete indicator data is now being captured into the Linux per system, which is called the custom field. We have complete information in the GXR system. We also have tested to integrate with the national dashboard. Integration is working well. So now we will optimize and uh, we'll make it that in the lounge or accessible for uh, the public or for the Ministry of Health. So while we were making this implementation, there were some few technical challenges which I will try to mention. One of them is poor connectivity. Now we are advising regional labs to have uh, a good internet connectivity and significant improvements are available. The other one is a low capacity server. Chai is uh, supporting and donating servers to Ethiopia Public Agency to host some of the dashboards. Almost the regional access dashboard, the JXR dashboards are all hosted on Chai donated servers. And also at testing lab level, improvements are available in terms of updating the servers. Data backlog is a very common issue, so that the data, data backlog is due to uh, start turnover, especially related with the data clerks. And also when um, when machine breakdown is available, so testing will be interrupted for a while. When the machine resume testing, huge volume of testing will be coming. So that will be data backlog. These days, these old issues are now uh, cleared out. Hardware failure is always common because testing, all the EAD Varallo data systems are installed into locally available computer systems. So technical failures in terms of the hardware is common. So we are always working on backup and frequently working on troubleshooting and educating the data clerks. So they are somehow uh, optimally maintaining the system. That is somehow the presentation from my side. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, um, uh, uh, the Chai team, for very informative presentation. I, 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 I actually must admit that we probably need more time for this presentation, but uh, I will share the presentation with the participants. There are a number of questions that have come through, and I think, um, I need to pick the very first one that touches on, on, on resources. The team that we have among the participants are drawn from about 13 countries. And within those countries, they are, they are at different levels of implementation, both within for the LMIS and the dashboard. So there's a question that comes from Collins. And Collins is asking, what are some of the resources? What would be the level of financial investment required to implement a, such a system, a system that allows you to track the result at the national level, that at the same time have a, have, have a dashboard. From the implementation that you have done, what would be your guidance to a country that does not, does not currently have a system and would want to have to put a system in place? Thank you. So financial investments and resources that are required to implement such systems, uh, it differs based on the country's available infrastructure. So the first step is to do an assessment of like what are the different levels of infrastructure, starting from the central location where we want to host all the incoming data and, and uh, uh, the different locations uh, or laboratories where we want to implement limbs or connectivity solutions. So how many sites do we have? Um, how many different types of devices, diagnostic devices we need to connect, uh, and the number of uh, main uh, national laboratories or uh, regional district laboratories do we need uh, to equip with uh, a laboratory information system and what type of infrastructure exists um, and exist in different locations. Once we, we do that assessment, then we can estimate uh, the, the infrastructure cost and the implementation cost uh, uh, to, to have such system uh, in place. So it differs uh, on, on the level of implementation, scale-ups that, that, uh, that you want to achieve. 
uh, but system-wise, uh, so when I say system, like the application systems, uh, the Linz application system or the dashboard application system, the connectivity application system, most of them already exist. So you don't need to start from, uh, from scratch. Uh, there are open source solutions, uh, partner developed solutions, uh, or even vendor diagnostic device, vendor-based solutions, which can be adopted uh, to for a quicker implementation uh, uh, of such systems. Uh, but yes, it needs a, a, a good amount of financial investment uh, uh, and also collaboration with different partners and open source communities uh, and equipping uh, the ministries with technical capacity to do the follow-up and sustain it, not uh, not just implementing during the pilot uh, or scale-up period, but uh, also transition the technical knowledge, uh, the starting from the initial phase uh, to through out the pilot and scale-up, so that uh, countries, uh, ministry, technical people uh, can take over and sustain the system. Uh, uh, so it's, yeah, I know it's not a definite uh, figure, but uh, you, you you need to pass through such processes to uh, to get uh, an, a figure for uh, financial investment. Well, thank thank you so much, and and I'm I'm conscious of time, and therefore I'll I'll, I'll sneak this question that touches on integration. We have COVID nineteen, we have TB. We have very low testing, and the majority of this is happening with the same, within the same platform. The question that that then would, would, a country would have is, what would be a recommendation on, to a country that wishes to implement an integrated system for tracking testing for viral load TB and COVID nineteen? Thank you. Can I pick up this one? Let's go ahead. Yeah. So as part of the country experience that we have, previously uh, there were COVID treatment centers which were available separately. Now countries are going into the service integration. So COVID will be integrated as part of any other system available in country. So all, every health facility might be uh, responsible to manage the COVID case. So health facility level, data capturing and reporting tools are available. It could be HMIs, it could be DHI. So, so in all of the systems, the COVID the component of data is now being into the integration. So available systems available in the health facility. That could be EMR, it could be the EMR system or HMI system or DHI systems. So they can be scaled up to incorporate the, the COVID data component. So data will be re reported from a single system. The country in Egypt has now uh, introduced the service integration concept. Data is to be integrated. So we are into the implementation stage of that one. Next, the next concern or question touches on, on the issues of integration, but in this time is the integration with the aggregate data system. Because if, you, if you'd want to compute the various cascade, maybe the cascade of people who are not suppressed, or even the people who are suppressed would, follow, would want to follow a number of indicators around that cascade. And therefore the question is, what solution exists that's facilitated data sharing between LMIS and aggregate, aggregate data system, such as DHIS, facilitate progress tracking across the various cascades. Are there solutions that quickly allows you? And I think there was a slide that was talking about that level of integration. I, do, I just want you to expand on that a little bit more. Thank you. So uh, for the integration with DHIS to in the LMIS, uh, most uh, countries uh, is developing their own uh, in-house uh, uh, APIs to integrate uh, DHS with uh, this application, like uh, some experience with that we have is uh, Zumbabi, which they uh, uh, develop an, uh, a solution which will uh, uh, which will send uh, result data from laboratory to DHS tracker, uh, patient tracker, patient uh, uh, tracker application. So uh, since DHS to expose all data sets in in a uh, all data sets uh, as 
API. Uh, so the team there, uh, partner, which is Chai, is the one who's developing it uh, with the laboratory information system. So they will uh, uh, pick the national ID uh, with the patient and send that result information to DHIS2 tracker, which is uh, uh, using the patient ID that they have, but uh, from uh, currently there are no commercial or uh, uh, open source technologies that is sharing between DHIS2 and other LIMS application. Most of the time uh, in-house uh, uh, application are the uh, ones that are uh, currently developed at each uh, countries. So thank you very much. and and. Miliam from Uganda is asking, and I think as you're highlighting some of the solutions that you have, you mentioned as, uh, uh, areas when data clerks are called upon to enter results. And Miriam is asking, why would data clerk again register results? Why wouldn't this pave way for transcription errors? Thank you. So uh, actually the system has the feature to enable the result entry either by data clerks or quality officers but at some time if data clerks are registering the, 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 the results so the, the quality officer has to approve once again the, the the process flow is first the sample is registered at the testing lab i mean at the reception of this then after registering the result day whenever results are ready the, the result will be recorded by the data clerks and the quality officer has to make sure that they have perfectly copied it we were thinking of actually, we are, we were in the process of working with machine integration to feed data automatically into the system, but the machines are now usable for the COVID case. For the last one year, the machines are not necessarily accessible, but in the near future, we will be implementing machine interfaces. We will avoid manual data encoding of data clerks. Actually, different machines are now coming in picture. So we will keep on implementing the machine integration by at least the available system. The system was interrupted due to the COVID case that can significantly avoid transcription errors and reduce the workload of data clerks. Thank you and back to you. Uh, and finally, I, 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 I recognize we only have one more minute and, and Grace is asking, do you, do you use remote logging for samples? And, and a follow-up question on that, does the dashboard have mechanism of alerting the courier services to pick the samples? once they have been logged in, I believe. Actually, the system has remote login only to the ATPM Public Agency, Federal Ministry of Health, and uh, partners and agencies. So remote login is allowed for system. So testing sites, they won't do remote login because the system is locally installed in there. There is another specimen tracking system which uh, facilitates or let the courier service to make sure that the system is already available. Not only for the AD and bar load, there was a system in place for specimen tracking. For all specimens, the health facilities communicating with the courier system. This system is not usable or accessible for the courier services. It is available for ETP Public Institute, Federal Ministry of Health, agencies and partners. For a specimen tracking case for the courier, they have another system to track uh, samples not only for the VARA load, but for all other laboratory specimens. So, so thank you. So it's, a, it's a, at the top of the hour, and, and thank you so much for that clarification, and thank you so much for the presentation. And at this point, I would want to call upon um, Peter uh, Trevor in case he has any closing remarks to make. And when I take, uh, I just want you to highlight through the country teams what kind of support and what kind of systems, uh, what kind of support. Would, 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 that they, they, they might require or they might need or they might get from, from the kind of work that you have done. Thank you and welcome, Peter. Well, th thanks, thanks very much for the question. I think um, I, I would say the overall, I think picture with data systems is that they, they are essential for how <clears throat> we run laboratory services and how we and how health systems <clears throat> and services run. So they are, they're sort of an essential component, however, you know, perennially underinvested in. Uh, and so uh, in terms of sort of some of the key areas of support, uh, one is just, you know, 
firstly socialization and, and, and creating a deeper understanding around what the black box of data systems are and their and the particular applications. Um, and, and COVID-19 has, has, I think, really helped to illustrate how important information about testing is for dashboards, keeping track of where the infections are. And even as we roll out vaccines, that's going to be increasingly important. So uh, simply a greater advocacy um, and socialization is, is one of the first most important areas. And, and I know that there's several uh, data specialists on this call, and there are many others. And I think that community, uh, uh, you, know, you know, through the support of ASLM, uh, I think should should find its voice to to communicate that that uh, that uh, value uh, widely amongst all the different sort of different stakeholders. And then, secondly, I, I think what is most important, and here again, I would look to the the, the community of data scientists, data program implementers. Um, uh, with the support from ASLM and Africa CDC and other partners, is to is to support the the different components of implementation, because there are some very technical pieces, some very you know pieces that are that are you know about you know different code you know coding and different softwares and compatibility and interoperability, uh, and uh, laying cable and getting data to the right places. And APIs and so on, and so that's very black box. And I think they there there's work needed there to to expand the community of people who work on that, and and uh, create within each country almost like a small, like a, I guess a small a community of people you know connected with different countries, of course, and a network to really uh, uh, to build up the expertise because you cannot implement a health system on a national level around data unless the expertise exists within the country, there's, there's a sufficient critical mass of people with the right expertise to do that work. Uh, uh, and so even if we do the advocacy and policymakers say, well, let's move forward with implementing these dashboards and these m &E systems uh, for our testing services or other aspects of healthcare, it, 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 the, the health uh, ministries cannot really do that unless there's sufficient expertise in country. Uh, and so some of that expertise will grow through learning. Some of it will grow through just, you know, uh, within each country, small communities of the people who, who have this expertise coming together uh, to support programs. And then lastly, you know, I think that the, the, um, what we've found is that, is that funding is often a challenge for data because it's viewed as the system that's working in the background. It isn't the vaccine, it isn't the drug. Uh, it isn't even the test, it's, but it's what makes these things really work. It's part of the interstitial tissue of how health systems work. And, and uh, donors often consider that something which governments should, should cover and pay for, it's part of regular health services. And so it's very difficult sometimes to get sufficient funding uh, uh, to support uh, the technology implementation. And it's because it's you know, if there, are, if there are expenses for sure. There's expertise expenses. There's, there's, there's expertise. There's um, technology expenses, and there's ongoing maintenance expenses. And and we found that there's often not enough funding uh, in, in a consistent way. Some of it has to come from governments. A lot of it has to come from governments. A lot of catalytic funding can come from donors as well. So I'll, I'll stop there. I went a bit long, but uh, th those are some of the key priority areas that that we see. Over. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for, for that very comprehensive summary of what countries need to, to factor in as they're thinking about rolling out system that would allow them to increase availability of data, especially at national level, and, um, uh, and mainly to use the same data to track um, patient outcome. I, it is, we have six minutes past the time, past the hour, and, and I would want to bring the session to an end. I will share the presentation and, and the session um, the session uh, recording with the participants. But just to remind you that we will we, we'll be having um, an exciting session on data quality. We have walked this journey. We have looked at our framework. We have looked at our indicators. Now we have looked at our system. And uh, as we say, a system is only as good as the, the data that you put in it. As uh, uh, They normally say garbage in, garbage out. And, and in the next session, which will be looking at the quality of the data that, that what, what quality consideration need, need we put in place as you're thinking about our MNE system that addresses the issues of lab. 
With that, I would want to wish every one of us a good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Thank you and, 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 and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.